uh, historical uh, uh, dome, okay, the heat map. Okay. Now we're getting insight here. We turn that on. Let's turn off our candlestick chart. Okay. All right. Now, how does this help us? Okay. Well, uh, you can see here, for example, uh, they're starting to absorb. Uh, looks like on the buy side here with very high liquidity here, this orange, orange and yellow lines. Uh, again, orange and kind of red down here. They're starting to, it looks like, uh, absorb in some of these areas. So we're starting to see, you know, on the bid here, there's some interest in buying. Okay. Well, that led to, uh, uh, you know, maybe exhausting out some of the buyers and fi finding, or sellers, I'm sorry, uh, and uh, starting to find some buyers. Okay. And they'll, they'll come back in and lift the offer up into some of the higher highs here. Okay. So anyway, uh, let's um, understand how this is all derived here, and that, because that's important. It's all derived from the dome, okay? Your depth of market, okay? and all the insights that we're going to get here. Well, we're going to go through that in detail in the uh, advanced order flow webinar. But I can go over some of some of the uh, uh, more s simpler or straightforward uh, order flow phenomena. Okay, but let's uh, let's define what the heat map is because this is where people get kind of um, uh, a bit uh, confused, okay? It's really simple. It's really straightforward. Uh, most of us are accustomed to the dome, okay? Your depth of market. And so uh, uh, this is what it looks like in book map here. Okay? Everything to the right of this vertical white line here is the current market. Okay, now you can see the heat map's changing here. Okay? Let's zoom in a little bit more, okay? Now you can see the uh, this is your best bid and offer here. Here's your price ladder for the NASDAQ. This is current price. Okay, this number is the last traded volume here. Uh, and then uh, we're looking at the uh, depth of market here. This is your dome, COB column, current order book. It's showing your depth of market uh, on the offer. These are traders or contracts uh, waiting to uh, transact, uh, providing liquidity at these uh, price levels. Okay, they want to be sellers up here. Down here, they want to be buyers, and they're providing liquidity. This is the auction. Okay, this is uh, the current auction and what's going on. Now, note some of these these changes that are just taking place now. So, when these numeric values change, the contracts they're they're either added or pulled. Okay, it's reflected here in this window. Okay, with the heat map. Okay, we'll see a change, and it's it's changed in the heat map. Now, where it gets really interesting is we take that data, and then it's uh, recorded and transposed on the chart historically. Okay. So how does that help us? Well, let's zoom out. Okay. Now we can start to use the dome, not just for the current market, but we can start to use it on much higher time frames and start to understand the relationship of sellers up here with price and the aggressors, the buyers. Okay. And then the buyers on the bid down in some of these areas. And how are they behaving? Okay. So now we're starting to get a really big uh, uh, picture and understanding of not only the current market, okay, but the historical market. Okay. So, for example, why is price starting to reverse right now? Well, look at them. They, they traded up into these um, uh, pretty high contracts up here. Okay. Looking at uh, this uh, 69, 66 area here. Okay. Well, uh, the, uh, the buyers uh, ran into... A lot of sellers willing to looks like stay in the book here and let's zoom in here and let's just make sure okay yeah a little little bit of pulling here uh, but um, uh, 49 contracts are here okay as you can see uh, and then uh, what traded here is actually about uh, 37 of those they started to pull some of it but some of it traded okay and then very high contracts here 85 uh, here as you can see in the in the dome uh, at uh, the 69, uh, 66 price level, okay? And as I scroll forward, okay, well, did that area trade? And here's our answer, yes, okay? This is real liquidity. These 86 contracts, uh, they traded, okay? We see 20 that traded here so far, okay? And as we start to zoom back out, well, in the, in the end here, it looks like 84 of those traded, okay? So it was 86 out of those 86, 84 traded. And that's fact, okay? Now we understand and know that larger players were here, 
right? and they stayed in the book. This was real liquidity. They had the intent to trade. They are now sellers. Okay? And uh, we, we came up actually one more price level here okay? and traded into this higher liquidity up here, about uh, 50 contracts. And it looks like about 40 of those traded here. Some of it was pulled, no doubt, no doubt about it. But you can see some of it traded too. Okay. All right. So now we've seen larger players starting to absorb a lot of the price uh, uh, activity on the buy side. The buyers hit into this liquidity. They lifted the offer up into this area here and traded, and the transactions took place. Okay. They absorbed once, twice, thrice. Okay. Now they didn't absorb in, in, you know, in total all of it. Uh, uh, on the way up, uh, it, it does look like they did up here uh, because uh, uh, there was no more, I mean, price reversed at this point. Okay? Yeah, there was no more buyers. Okay, the, buy, the buyers are exhausted out here. Look at, look at the, the, uh, the best offer actually went one tick higher and not one contract traded up here. Okay? So now we know larger players are, uh, are positioned on the sell side here. Okay. We get one more test up above and uh, and find some buyers okay. uh, lift the offer a bit higher and actually that looks like some more absorption here took place as well or at least uh, uh, transactions were met uh, between the uh, uh, high liquidity here uh, it was about uh, 36 contracts at this point uh, and um, uh, it looks like about 51 traded okay. all right and uh, anyway. Uh, we we uh, we found the buyers and the sellers and transactions took place, uh, but uh, we didn't really find any any more follow through on buyers. Well, why is that? Well, I mean they just they there weren't more buyers. Uh, if there were, they would have lifted the offer higher up into this area up here where there's even higher liquidity, right? Instead, we didn't find the buyers. We we start to rotate back down, and uh, well, what happens in some of these areas? Well, we start to find some sellers, okay? And look at the little microstructural areas here that are, are broken, okay? Here's the, the sweep of the book to the high side, okay? Swept the book, they took all the liquidity from some of these price levels. Uh, and then uh, actually they didn't support it again here, no more buyers, sellers came in. Okay? And sellers really came in down here, all right? And so they're, they're pulling that market down, okay? So as you can see how important it is to understand the reaction or relationship between those that are providing high liquidity uh, and um, uh, the uh, the aggressors, uh, how much buying or selling pressure there is uh, in the marketplace. Okay? When you start to piece some of these things together, you can start to anticipate the price movement based on what you see.